Right guys, before we do this week's comments video, I want to tell you about something that's going on on the Ale Army, okay, which is this join button below. If you're on a desktop, you can click join. If you're on your mobile device, I'll leave a link in the description below. The Ale Army is a live stream we do every Thursday night at 6.30, and this week, for the first time, we've got one of these to give away. If any of you love doing a bit of home brewing or anything like that, then this is gonna be right up your alley. These are Pinter 2s, so the second version of Pinter's home brew kit. They're absolutely brilliant. Uh, I'm gonna have a little bit of a swig now. I've got a special pint of glass here as well. This one's the House of Hops. It's just coming to the end now. It's absolutely lovely. This one in here, I've done like a coffee stout in. Look, honestly, I had this on the Al Army last week and it was absolutely delicious. This is beautiful beer. <laughs> So yeah, we're gonna be giving away one of these this Friday. You've got the chance of winning a whole pint of two plus two of their beer kits as well to get you started. Let's have a quick look at one of those. So here's one of the beer kits. So you basically you get your wort in there, uh, but also we've got a little hopping bit in here and also a cleaner as well. So when this one's done, we use this cleaner in there to clear it up. So this week, that is what you're gonna get the chance to win, but also ongoing for any AL Army members, you're also gonna get access to a special voucher code. So when you do wanna buy one of these, if you're unfortunate enough to not win on Thursday, you're still gonna get the opportunity, if you're an AL Army member, to buy them at a discount and also buy this as well. If you haven't done, click the join button. You should join anyway if you like all this sort of stuff. And let's get on with this week's video. See you on Thursday night, guys. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to this week's Plumber Parts video. Harry, how's your week been? Shit, talk up so we can hear you on the mic. Yeah, it's been a great week. Yeah. Great week. You had the day off today? No, not today, no. It's been the day off today. You said you bought a new TV bought as well. A new TV at lunchtime, yeah. So I, it's uncanny, actually. I actually bought a new TV as well today. This is the first new TV I've bought in 15 years. And the only reason I had to buy it in the end is it had a black stripe right down the middle of it. And I couldn't really, I didn't take much notice of it, but it was driving the missus mad. So we upgraded to a 55 inch TV. I thought that was massive until Harry told me how big he, the TV was that he bought. How big has? 75 inches. 75 inches. You know what they say, big TV. Right, so we're gonna do some comments actually. So you guys have been good enough to leave us loads of comments on the videos over the last sort of, well, since Christmas time. And I realized I haven't answered some of them and I thought it'd be a good idea to get back uh, to you guys. Some of them are just nice questions. Uh, some of them are a little bit like argy bargy and I'm defending myself. So the first video we're gonna look at is video number one, the hidden access panel. Before we get started with this video, I'd like to ask you to click the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's really important and helps the channel grow. Anyway, let's get on with the video. You may remember I fitted a hidden access panel for the toilet so you could get in there and do work, but at the same time it needed to be tiled, it needed to look good, uh, and it, I was really pleased with it, to be honest. Some of you seem to agree, some of you disagree. Let's have a look at your comments. So, comment number one. This is from Richard Cara Creswell, I think. He said, uh, many thanks for these videos, amazing help. I'm replacing my bathroom and need to do some boxing in around the wall, mounted loo and bath. What size timber is good for that? Also, why did you choose tilebacker rather than abacus board? Thanks, Rich. Thanks for the comment, Rich. Well, number one, I used um, hardy backer because abacus board is almost like a foam type board. And when you're sitting down on a toilet, some of the weight of that toilet will go back into the wall at the bottom. And I was not quite happy enough that Abacus board would be able to take that weight, especially if some fatty sat there and did a big old shit. The other question you had, yeah, what size timber is good for box work? Usually, Usually you're gonna use untreated standard pine in inch to two inch square uh, battening kind of things, what you'd call it. And then on top of that, whatever you wanted to clad it in. Now you would be able to clad that in abacus board if you wanted to. So yeah, I think one inch to two inch square would be fine. Jimus Jones asked, uh, great video, thanks bud. Can I ask what you use to cut the excess tiles off after they have been stuck? Does it leave a good finish? I think what you're asking about is when I stuck the tiles on the, and there was some that was overhanging still, weren't there, by a couple of inches. I actually used a standard disc cutter with a special ox um, tile bit cutting thing on there. Uh, I'll leave the link to that blade in the Amazon store uh, and just got Emily to stand there with a hoover real close by to get all the dust in. I couldn't use my special dust box on that. Uh, so that's what I used and um, yeah, it seemed to do a pretty good job. There was a little bit of dust on the on the bath taps afterwards, but you know, I used my usual trick of having the fan by the window blowing the air out that way and it, it seemed to work fine. All right, so there you go. Ian Davies said, nice video. 
thumbs emoji. What tile adhesive do you use? I've got a bathroom to do myself soon and need all the help I can get as I'm a plasterer by trade. Number one, Ian, please help me. <laughs> I need plasterers, man. You guys are like gold dust, like rocking horse poo. All those people who went off and got their business studies degree are now absolutely knackered, aren't they? They've got massive debts and they can't get a job. All us waifs and strays who went and did a trade, raking it in, we're like that, aren't we? And we're all down the uh, golf course on a Friday. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I would say the adhesive I used. Uh, I, firstly, I never use pre-mixed adhesive. I always mix up my own adhesive. Um, I would always just go for like good flexible bowel, but the best thing you can do to find this out is to go on, I think, Tile Forum or Tyler's Forum. Ask those dudes, they're the ones who know. Failing that, there'll probably be a Tyler watching this. If you're watching now, anonymous Tyler person, can you please reply to Ian Davies in the comments below uh, and let him know what you use. That'd be really handy, because I'll kind of realize I probably haven't helped and usually Tyler's get funny about what adhesive you use, so I'm probably wrong anyway, but there you go. CDC uh, said, great video. Why at the start did you make the ply template and then transfer to your other material? Could that hold back not have just been ply and tile onto the ply? Uh, basically, no, you can't really tile onto ply. It's not a good idea, it's wood. So the moisture from the uh, tile adhesive will go into that wood and affect it somehow. Uh, if you wanna do the job properly, you do need to use like Hardy Backer like I did or a proper board that is designed for tiling on. The reason I did make a plywood template up in the first place is because Emily really wanted that toilet in for Christmas because we had family coming over and she was basically gonna divorce me if I didn't get it done in time. So it was more about trying to keep the G time happening in bed whilst also getting on with the bathroom. Neither are things that I've actually accomplished, unfortunately. Lawrence Oddy, now this is more of a statement for Lawrence here. He said, B day is definitely the way to go. It's much cleaner. If someone wiped poo on your face, would you be happy to just wipe it off with toilet paper? I don't think so. Love the videos, always a great watch. Now Harry, we had this conversation last week, didn't we? Yeah. About B-Days and all that. Would you be happy to wipe poo on your face? Or actually, maybe a better question is, have you ever wiped poo on your face? I don't think I have, no. And you wouldn't do it, would you? I do it, no. So when you think about that with your bum hole, would you be happy fair to... Fair point. It is yeah. a fair point. All right, you just don't want to talk about it, do you? You just want to move on to the next subject and avoid. Oh, don't blame him. Daniel Ari, I think that's how you say your name, don't know. He said, great idea, but my personal choice for frame are well-established Geberit or Grow ones. He's talking about the toilet frame that we used. We use a vitriol one on this video. Uh, no connection to main externally and all maintenance through the big flush button plate. In the long term, that concealed system is asking for trouble. Daniel, I just want to know why. The concealed system's not going to go anywhere. It's exactly the same as millions of other concealed systems and ex installed in exactly the same way. Uh, it's mechanically fixed that frame as well. Personally, I mean, I know what you're saying about having all this stuff through the access plate. I've got a toilet just through there that's like that, a, a vitro one as well, actually. Um, and they are nice. Sometimes they can be a bit fiddly, but for me in my own home, it was just nice to take off a big plate like that, take the, the big panel off, the access panel that I built. I can get to all the components nice and easily. And then Oki67 commented below and said, same here, mate. So they're ganging up on me now. He said, I'd say this series is aimed for DIYers. Not in a million years would I use Hardy Backer. I think I've already explained why I use Hardy Backer. If it was a shower, I'd probably use, what well, you guys use Jacko board or Jayco board. But for something that's load bearing, weight bearing, might have a big fatty sat there with all that weight going in. Uh, I much prefer to use Hardy Backer. All right. Moving on to video number two, 10 plumbing mistakes. Let's just pop it on like that and just take that off for a sec. What we've done here is we've put the PTFE on so it's going this way around. Now, when we put something onto this thread, the bit that we're gonna be doing up is gonna go on top like that and do up. Now, in some circumstances, this can result with the PTFE actually being pulled out. And I think you can actually see it happening a little bit. This little bit under here is actually showing that it's happening under there at the moment. I kind of thought this video would be a little bit clickbaity. I didn't really want to call it that, but at the same time I thought, you know, I've, I've, I've sort of targeted 10 mistakes that I think are really, really common when you're starting out in plumbing, or if you're a DIY, or even sometimes I make myself as a seasoned professional plumber, uh, and I thought it would just be a good idea to do it. Don't worry, there's loads more, and we probably will do more of those videos in the future. Not least because the first one was really bloody popular. Uh, so let's have a look at this one here. Uh, we've got Chaz McNeil said, hi mate, great videos, keep them fun coming. After 22 years military service, I'm now retraining, tiling and bathroom installations. Definitely gonna make loads of mistakes along the way. Remember to fail is just the first attempt in learning. You agree with that, Harry? I agree with that, yeah. You're only ever gonna learn if you fail. 
Mike Wilcox is wondering, said, uh, your video is a gold dust for DIYers. Been able to do so many jobs around the house, thanks to them. Might even have to go have a go at soldering next time. I need to do some pipe work. Thanks for making this possible. No worries, Mike. I hope your wanderings are as successful as your plumberings have been. Gordon Murray said, uh, since following advice on YouTube on using jointing compound and not over tightening compression fittings, the number of water features in our house has dropped to zero in the past years. Thanks mainly to James. Well, no worries, Gordon. Uh, you can leave me a super thanks, or you could join the AL Army and ask me questions with reckless abandon every Thursday evening at 6.30. Ethan F said, there are many, many videos against putting the PTFE around the compression olive. Well, Ethan, what I'm saying there is we're putting PTFE around the compression olive because it is a, a way of getting things to stop leaking on compression fittings. It's more of a tip to get you out of the stick of poo or something, whatever saying that is. It's a tip to get you out of trouble and then you can go around trying to affect a proper leak in the future, all right? Lycopotamus Slurperton. Although I find these plumbing video tutorials very informative, I vehemently disagree about the toilet roll thing. I think the toilet paper should be pulled from the back of the toilet roll, the part closest to the wall. That's insane. When I have my right leg on the toilet seat, it is so much easier to push the paper down than it is to pull it down. Then I can commence wiping my bottom. I hope others support me with this correct toilet roll protocol. I mean, I th yeah. All right, well, cheers for that, mate. Uh, you're wrong. Moving on to another video I did, MDPE pipe in my mate's garden. This one was a bit controversial uh, because obviously I wasn't gonna get a spade out and dig the MDPE down, but let's have a look at this. Tony Hawk it used to be a... Pro skater, first one to do a 920, I believe, on a half pipe many moons ago. He used to go around shouting at people, do a kickflip, right? Yeah. He'd film them. There's a little kid in my village, and I saw him on his skateboard. I'd never seen him skating before. And I saw him, and I was like, do a kickflip. And I shit you not, he did a full on kickflip. And I was like, all right. And then I said, do a heel flip. And he did a heel flip. And then I got him with a varial flip. He couldn't do that. But anyway, I couldn't do any of them, mate. I could barely Ollie. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I saw someone else's video of them putting down new pipe to connect mains water from the street to the house. Same kind of flexible blue pipe. In his case, he had to bury the pipe a fair distance below the ground to protect from frost. The reg said a minimum of a metre-ish. I forgot exactly. Um, is there a reason the pipes in this video weren't buried as deep? Well, yes, there are. Number one, the regulation state should be 750 millimetres deep, and the reason for that is to protect from frost. Now, you may have noticed, funnily enough, that the copper pipe that we were connecting to was probably about six inches under the ground, which is a bit, you know, it's just how they did it back then, isn't it? You know, they didn't really care. That's probably 19, I'd have said that would have been 1940, 1950 when that lot went in. But the reason I didn't bury it really deep is because I was going over there to help my mate out and they've got builders on site, they can do it. I just did it, didn't get paid, I only got paid for the fittings, I was doing it and I said to him, mate, bury that. I didn't think to put it in the video, so there we go. Lil Black and Blue, <laughs> what are these names all about? <laughs> So if both houses run off half inch pipe, wouldn't water pressure be limited to one or both houses depending on fixtures, saying if one house was using more water, wouldn't the other be, other be affected by it, even if water was there in three quarter? Um, yes, that is the case actually. And when my next door neighbors turn on their outside tap, I noticed, or I used to notice a drop in pressure in my house, but since I fitted my massive Stuart Turner mains boost, I don't have that problem anymore. Honestly, I don't. MM, this is just a completely random question, said, anyone know the best way to fill gap of what looks to be cast iron pipe around 190 mil in external diameter? And basically what they're doing is they're feeding a four inch pipe into that. The way to do it is not to fill it, it's actually to buy the proper rubber fitting, it has like a Jubilee clip around each end of it. Uh, in fact, I think you might have seen it, or oh, you know what, we did an AL Army, special AL Army thing about it. So join the AL Army and I'll be able to show you some photos of it. Uh, but few, last week, one of the AL Army members sent us through some pictures of their work and they'd use this exact connector to solve this problem. So maybe you should do that. But there's special rubber connectors you can do that go from cast uh, over to four inch and they're what you should use. Make sure you use a bit of CT1 on it or a sealant as well, just to make sure, because obviously cast can be a bit whippily, all right? Martin A1 said, why the towel? Well, I wrapped a towel around the frozen section of pipe because we had to freeze a section of copper pipe because there wasn't any way we could turn it off from the mains. And the reason I wrapped a towel around it, it because it was a bit sunny and I didn't want my frozen section of pipe to defrost and catch me unawares while I was doing some work elsewhere on the site. Uh, or, or on the job. So obviously a towel around that will help to insulate it, help to keep it cool, and then I'll whip it off 
uh, and let it defrost when the job's done. So then the final video that I'm gonna talk about from your comments is the bathroom vanity unit video. A beautiful beast. Alan Manley said, I'm amazed that the siphon is not made to fit next to the wall instead of under the basin. I modified mine and now have a drawer without a big cavity in the center. I understand what you're saying, Alan. Um, it can be a bit of a pain having all this pipe work right in the center of your vanity unit. But as you could probably see in the video, that vanity unit's top drawer was specifically designed to take all of the trap and all the pipe work and all that in it anyway. So that's how I was gonna do it. Also, I mean, you can sort of do a little bit of a leg back. You see it often with uh, one and a half sinks and things like that in kitchens. Um, so it's definitely doable. I take your point, meh. That's all I can say is meh. Legion of Many said, James, quick question, watching many, way too many of your videos. Uh, you seem to frown on the use of isolation valves you've used here. What's the crack with their use then? So what he's saying is, is um, oh, he said also, um, was this carried out on a Friday, a Flexi Friday? All right, I use flexibles. And like I said in the video, I would use flexibles for this one specific thing leading up to taps. It's a good idea to use them. Um, the isolation valves, if someone, you're actually supposed to file off the taper on the end of isolation valves like that. The thing is, is that I'd use them going up to a sink, but if it was anything more important, like turning off a whole house or turning off the whole cold or whole hot supply to something, I would always use lever valves because they're miles more reliable and that's reflected in the price. One thing you'll always find with isolation valves, if they squeak, they're probably gonna be made in China and they're probably gonna leak. Always use jointing compound like I did in the video uh, to try and negate that problem. All right. John Westwood he said, where did you buy the vanity unit from? Don't worry, mate. I found the vanity unit on Amazon and I've left a link to it below. Boom shakalaka. Lee Waldron uh, asked me, uh, how long do you have to leave the solvent well glue to set before you test it? Pretty much, mate, it's almost instant. If you want to leave it five minutes, you can. But if you see the way I did it, you put the solvent around, put it in, twist, and then leave it to set. Uh, that will really get it to sort of bind up with the, um, with the plastic and the glue in there. Um, so yeah, after five minutes, not even that. You could pour water down it pretty much within about 30 seconds and it probably wouldn't leak, but give it five minutes just in case. And Wayne Murray, he uh, said, James, quality of it again, mate. Can you let us know where you got the sink and vanity unit from? And the mate, please, just what we're looking for. Just like I said earlier on, it's now in the Amazon store. So you can find it there using the links below. Guys, thanks ever so much for watching today's comments video. Please leave comments on all of our videos. If they're more in-depth type questions, then I'm a lot more likely to kind of pick them out and speak about them in a few weeks time when we do another comments video. Uh, but also, if you just want to say that I look like Bradley Cooper, then you never know that might happen as well. Anyone who says I look like Bradley Walsh, I will ignore, but my wife will laugh about. She always does. Bradley, Bradley Cooper or Bradley Walsh, Harry? Thank you. Love you, baby. Thanks for watching guys, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification because sometimes YouTube doesn't tell people when we put a video out and I'll see you on Saturday's instructional video and on our little shorts videos as well. Thanks for watching guys, see you soon. Hold tight. WhatsApp's probably gonna be the place as well that I'll share all the behind the scenes stuff. So what I'll probably do over the next few days, some of you this will probably matter to, some, probably most of you this won't matter because most of you are behind the scenes members already. Um, but we'll keep the 